many Bible texts you can quote, how many spirit of prophecy quotes you got now, how many vegetarian meals you can prepare. You know, and I'm not laughing at this though. I'm, I'm not making fun in light of it. It all has its place, but that's not where the battles fall. The battle is fought in your character. Now, if these things help you enhance your character, God be praised. Amen? But it's not going to save you. The character is where salvation happens. Amen. Amen. And the Bible says clean and white. Clean and white. It's almost like you're saying the same thing, but you mean something different. Clean and white. And I understood this only as I began to understand my wife. My wife dresses my son for church every Sabbath morning. And you know, he like us, when we were growing up, you see pictures and think we was in the military because we all had the same thing on. <laughs> the blue pants. Oh, come on, say amen. You know, that like y'all was, I grew up with y'all now, come on now. We all look like little soldiers running around here. Ain't nobody had no suits back then, amen. I see these little kids coming today, they got silk suits. Say, shoot, what did they mama do for a living? I ain't wearing a suit till I got to college. be wearing suits and, 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 and they be dressing man they got patent leather shoes and all that stuff amen, amen. We, we had the heater beaters y'all don't remember the heater beaters them shoes that was made out of that material that when the sun shine on them real intense nobody understand what I'm saying cause it wasn't patent leather it wasn't leather it wasn't gator Amen. Amen. It was made out of a material not known to man. And it intensified the heat. Amen. Heater beaters. You be beating that sidewalk and that heat be coming up through your shoes. No wonder we like to go around barefoot. Amen. But, but the point is, he, he gets dressed, she, and, and she, always, she puts him in those blue pants and that white shirt. My wife's still living back there, and he hates it. <laughs> he wants to wear something more up to date, you know, and she'd be putting him in that stuff. And, 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 but she would do it before he would eat. <laughs> so he put on the shirt, and everything's good. Clean and white. Then he go downstairs and make breakfast. Amen. And he likes strawberry jam on his biscuits. What y'all? What's wrong? And and as he would eat it, you know, he liked to pile the jam on. So when he eats it, and he turns that biscuit in an angle. Amen. There were biscuits made on Friday. Say amen. amen. Cause I know some of y'all was trying to figure that out. How you get a biscuit on Sabbath morning? <laughs> you know, and a little jelly leak off the biscuit and hit his shirt. Now, it would only be a little spot. But my wife would come out and make such a big deal. Cause you know, to me, it was still clean. <laughs> Boy, can go to church now. But mama ain't gonna let him out the house. You ain't going to bag me walking up in there with some dirty shirt and, and then think I don't take care of you. This is just a little old spot. Now he got to take the whole shirt off. Gotta take the whole shirt off because mama done declared the whole shirt filthy. Over one little spot. Now, if mama can look at a shirt clean and white and see one little spot and declare it so filthy that you can't wear that no more, what do you think of George who shed his blood? 
was whipped, beaten, persecuted, prosecuted, and all that crown of thorns in his head. You know the story. He did all that to clean us up. Then we're going to show up in the judgment with one little spot, a little speck. And you can think he's going to say, that don't matter? No, he said, I'm going to say, depart from me. You filthy. Get away from me. The battle is not in your works. It's in your spiritual relationship with Christ. Your character has to change. It has to be molded. There's got to be something different about you. Because if there's one spot, a one blemish on you, not the church. Everybody be generalizing the church. Got to be without spot or blemish. Guess who the church is? Because Jesus ain't counting how many. He suffered, bled, and died for just one. So if one person is without spot or blemish, that's going to be the church that he comes back for. We aren't the church. You are the church. I am the church. And our garments have to become clean and white. Small sins are just as bloody as large sins, as medium sins. Some of us treat sins like we buy eggs. Eggs come in extra large, large, medium age. You know what I'm saying? We act like our sins are like eggs. But the Bible says sin is sin. Sin is not a thing. Sin is a presence. And the presence of sin is what stinks in the nostrils of God. It's an odor. It's a presence. It's like when you walk in a room and the room can look clean as I don't know what. You ever walk in somebody's house and look clean but it smell funky? <laughs> Go in a nursing home, you know, look all speak in Spanish, floor all shine, but it got that nursing home smell. Talk to me. That's what sin is because some of us look like we're going to heaven. But there's a presence. There's an odor that God can detect. Clean and white. If you understand that, say amen. And out of his mouth goeth what? The sharp sword. That with it he should smile, oh, she smite, smile. He should smile at the nations. He should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. See? He ain't always going to be the good shepherd. You see, David says, Thy rod and thy staff. When sheep are trying to do what's right, he uses a staff with the shepherd's crook. That means he just gently pulls them back into the fold. But when things are about to attack, he turns the staff around the other way. And he uses it as a rod to beat off predators, enemies. Huh? And the Bible says now he's going to have a rod of iron. Somebody beat you with a rod of iron, that's going to hurt. Yes. Amen? Amen? We used to thought palmetto switches was rough. Yes. Yeah. And he treadeth the wine press and the fierceness and the wrath of Almighty God. And he hath his, on his vesture, remember that blood dipped vesture, and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings 
and Lord of Lords. In other words, this time he's coming to take care of business. He's going to have a rod in his hand. He's not going to be put on a cross. He's not going to make not a sacrifice. He's not going to listen to one excuse. You're going to face him not as your savior. You're going to face him as your king and your Lord. I want to be in the army that sits on the horse. What about you? Amen? Amen. I'm a soldier in the army. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So tonight, we want to wrap it all up. Wrap it all up and, and talk about how do we get the garment now clean and white. Last night, we saw how things got polluted. Amen. Tonight we're going to discuss what that pollution is, where it came from, and how we clean it up. Yes, and I want to leave you clean Amen. and white. Yes. If you don't go to heaven, don't blame me. Yes. When you're sitting on the outside looking in and you see me, don't be saying, hey, man, look at... <laughs> I'm going to be saying, nah, 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 <laughs> nah, 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 hey, hey, hey. Goodbye. Because I'm going to be satisfied I did my best to get you on the other side of that transparent wall of Jasper. Hello? You can get mad at me. I don't care. I don't want you to like me. I want you to love me. And you can't love me if I don't tell you the truth. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. I'm not running a popularity contest. I don't care if I'm the best or worst speaker you ever heard. It doesn't matter to me. I, 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 I had an old man, his name was Elder McClam, who mentored me in ministry. He told me, don't get excited when they stand up and applaud you after the sermon. He said, you shouldn't look no different when they boo you off the stage either. Yes, because you're not there for their reaction. Yes. You represent something greater than yourself. Yes, so tonight, I saved this message for the last because I had to really understand the word of God on this wise. The Bible says Jesus sometimes went in the midst of multitudes preaching and teaching. And things got so rough, he vanished out of their sight. I say this sermon for the last night. <laughs> A prophetic generation. That generation that will not pass till all be fulfilled. That generation that will see those signs. Um, Sam, do me a favor. On one of those junk drives, I had that quote I had the first night. It says, um, it says tidal waves and earthquakes. Boot that for me for the very end, just the very end. I'll, I'll do after this is over. Okay. A prophetic generation, that generation that will not pass until all be what? Fulfilled. There's a lot left to happen. All hasn't been fulfilled yet. Probation hasn't closed. Somebody ought to say hallelujah. Because if probation would close before I came here, some of y'all be stuck. Come on, say amen. amen. Just everybody say amen so we won't know who was stuck. Amen. amen. <laughs> yeah. And 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 we 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 know that the, the, the time of trouble hasn't been fulfilled yet. The seven last plagues have not hit yet. So guess what? The good news tonight is no matter what I've preached or how mad you got, you still got time. Amen. Say amen. amen. There's still some hope. Amen. 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 There's still some hope. Amen. 
Because we don't know the day or the hour. Amen? Amen? So we got to not get ready, but we have to be ready. Amen? Amen? And it's this generation that has to prepare itself because all the other signs have been fulfilled. The get ready signs have already been fulfilled. Now you need to be ready. Get ready was what your granddaddy preached. Are you listening to me? Now two generations later, it's be ready. For in the hour that you think not, just when you're getting comfortable wearing your stuff, going in your places. Hello? So busy questioning God, why can't I? Why can't I? You got a problem right there. Whenever you got an eye question for God, there's a problem. Because if you remove I out of sin, you can't spell it. Some people trying to figure that one out. What I'm trying to say is, <laughs> the biggest problem in sin is self. So when all your questions are selfish, instead of sacrificial, you just got the wrong S word. It's selfish instead of sacrificial. Instead, you're trying to find excuses for what you want to do instead of doing what Jesus says do. Why can't I go to the movies? Because in the movies are advertisements. What type of advertisements? Brief nudity. Foul language. Devil got you uninterrupted. It ain't even a commercial. You don't even get a break. Killing and stealing and you know you don't go see no movies that ain't got that in it ain't no fun. Like I tell everybody, all oh, don't mean religious. <laughs> PG don't mean pretty good. <laughs> Come on now. Yeah. And then the Bible says, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are pure. Yeah. Come on, y'all. Yeah. This is the sniff test. Yeah. The sniff test. If you can hold up your entertainment and pass the sniff test, then you go ahead. Whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, huh? Whatsoever things are of good report. These are the things Jesus says you ought to let into your mind. You shouldn't think on anything else. You shouldn't contemplate anything else. Yeah. Why is it getting quiet in here? Yeah. I know Delray ain't got no young people that go to the movies. Yeah. And I know their parents not letting them go. Yeah. And I know the parents ain't taking them. Yeah. So what's the problem? Say amen. Yeah. Cause we already know Preach. that we abstain from places where evil appears. Yeah. We already know 1 Thessalonians 5.22. Abstain from places where evil appears. Amen. Or every appearance of evil. Oh, y'all didn't know that? Oh, y'all thought it was all right to go to the movies? What? Say it ain't so. It's not that angels will fold their wings. It's that the devil will blow your mind. The, the battle is not about wings and who's folding them. The war is about your mind. The avenues to your soul. Oh, the young people are quiet. Hold on. They can't hear me back here. Let me talk to y'all. Y'all do know you don't go to the movies, right? 
Y'all do know that, right? Y'all heard this before? That seven day Adventists don't have those kind of worldly amusements, and when you're baptized, you make a vow to God that you will not have questionable and worldly amusements. You know you made that promise to God. Right? Everybody who just understood the words that come out of my mouth, raise your hand. You better put them up, I'll keep talking. Yeah, all right. Yeah. It's thou shalt not, that's the 11th commandment, thou shalt not go to the movies. <laughs> yeah. And parents, stop letting them go. And for you, you say, well, I ain't going. I just let them go. They say, young. They need some fun. But, but y'all even need to be for real. If, if, if you come to church, you come through those doors. And look at this. You got all these lights and theater stuff. You got a big screen up here. But I guarantee you, none of y'all gave me a $12 offering tonight. But you go to the movie. And you give them a $12 offering. Nothing else is just bad stewardship. Where your offering going? <laughs> well, y'all don't like to think about practical things, do you? Y'all want me to say something weird so y'all can get in the parking lot and talk about it. But I'm trying to tell you, serving God ain't weird. It's, it's very practical. All you have to do is think about the principles. Stop trying to make so many rules and teach these young people principles. Yeah. Then stuff will make sense. Yeah. Then you live in front of them with principles. Because yeah. some of y'all won't go to the movies, but that already movie come right on your Betamax VCR. Well, Betamax, I'm real dating myself now. <laughs> DVD or DVR, amen? And it's just as filthy in the movie as it is in your house. And it shouldn't end up in your house because your house ought to be a place where Jesus dwells. It's probably more important how you serve God in private than how you serve him in public. What you do behind closed doors is probably a greater witness than what you do in public. Y'all don't hear me old people, let me come out here and talk to y'all. <laughs> no, I ain't gonna start nothing here Cause some of y'all jump up and slap me inside the head. But this is not funny. We are going to hell justifiably so just to find stuff that we used to be clear about. Amen. Somebody act like Jesus fell asleep and while he was sleeping, God the Father changed everything he died for. If it could be changed, Jesus could have got off the hook. Instead of dying, he could have just changed the thing, rewrote the stuff. But even he knew he couldn't change the thing that comes out of my. He said, what comes out of my lips, I cannot alter it. I can't change it. I can't modify it. I can't edit it. If it was wrong when Adam hit, it's wrong when the last Adam stand there. It does not change because it's built on principles. Think about this. God took ten commandments and covered every sin you can think of. Y'all ain't getting this. <laughs> because the commandments are principles. He took ten principles and covered every issue that could ever come up on the face of the earth and let you know you have sin. Know the principles of the Bible. Yes. Know what God stands for. Yes. Then it makes sense. And if you want to live for God now, I didn't say you couldn't go to live. Ain't nobody going to strike you down. Stop telling these people that stuff. Stop scaring them into Jesus. 
Because as soon as they get big enough not to be scared of nothing, they're going to be gone. Nobody going to strike you down. You ain't going to die if you eat a piece of pork. You know how seen a lightning bolt and hit you for smoking a joint of marijuana? It's, it, it's, it's unlikely to happen. Now, I didn't say it's impossible, but it's unlikely to happen because God don't want you to serve him out of that kind of fear. He wants you to do the intelligent thing. Read about it, understand the principles, and when some situation meets up with your principles, your principles kick in and you don't have to worry about every little situation. got too many policies and we don't know principles. All right. How do we get in the mess? What is the mess? And how do we get it cleaned up? A prophetic generation. Let's go. Next slide. Are y'all with me up there? Oh, I'm down here. No, he did. He did. He rescued me tonight. Okay. Let's see. Right, but I did that. <laughs> well, I'm getting I'm gonna be a bad man when I leave here. I'm causing stuff to appear. Y'all see how the devil loves me? <laughs> yeah, well, it's just it's just fair one. I, I mean, I'm used to this. I've been doing this 26 years now. It doesn't ever fail. You go in the book of Revelation, stuff gonna happen because it exposes Satan for who he is. And whenever you don't don't mess with him if you ain't gonna try to live right. Because he'll jump off of you and jump into somebody else. And don't be casting out devils unless you know what you're doing. <laughs> you be trying to cast one out of somebody and three of them jump in you. <laughs> Try it again. Hit black screen. I, I, all right. I hit black screen. Cool. Thank you. Hallelujah. We'll see. So surely Lord God does nothing unless, and I keep putting this up here because I want to burn this in your brain. Okay? It is the brand of our church. Believe it or not. See, people don't understand. Seventh Adventists are not Protestants. We are not Protestants. We, our church did not come out of the Reformation. We are not Protestants. We ain't protesting nothing. Are you listening to me? We are prophetic. This church is here because of prophecy. That don't encourage nobody? In other words, in God's mind, this church was seen. And he, he put it here in prophecy. The remnant church of Revelation 12 is identified in prophecy. Yes. Are you listening to me? Yes. We're not Protestants. We're prophetic. Yes. And that should be encouraging that you're in a prophetic church because this text says he won't reveal his last day secrets until you become his servants, the prophets. Yes. You have to be prophetic to hear a prophetic voice. So you need to be in a prophetic church. So a prophetic God can speak his prophecies to your prophetic mind. Amen. Now we are prophetic, not pathetic. <laughs> he reveals his secrets to his servants, the prophets. 
We saw all of the signs that had come to pass. All nine, I won't go through all of them. The knowledge shall be increased. And it brought us back to the word of God. And we asked the question about moral values in an immoral world. And we said to find an answer to these things, we would go to the book of Revelation. Because it is the revelation of who? So John says he had a vision. And in his vision of Revelation 12, he says he saw a woman clothed in white raiment. On her head was a crown of 12 stars. It says, and, and she had the moon beneath her feet. And he says that this woman had a child that it bared up and the dragon tried to devour the child. Amen? And there was war. There was war in heaven. Amen? The warfare began. Are you listening to me? And so this woman was also a vision in Revelation. Now, they said, I cannot back up yet, or it's not impossible. Okay, this woman is clothed also. Yes. Amen? Yes. She's clothed in purple yes. and has a golden cup in her hand and is decked with gold and pearls. Are you listening to me? Yes. Are you listening to me? Yes. Now, Upstairs, can you back it up one? This woman is called the true church. This woman is called Babylon. Back it up one more time because I don't have reverse on here. Back it up again. True church, Babylon. Back it up again. True church, Babylon. And all the difference is, is what they're wearing. Jesus, in revealing himself in his true church, uses dress to separate truth from apostasy. Y'all not, not feeding on this, are you? Because some people like to ask me, what's so important about dress? <laughs> I didn't say it's important. Jesus says it's important. When he, when he uses things, he uses things in Revelation that are obviously wrong or right. On the true church, back up. Back up. She's clean. She's wearing white. She has a crown, so she's victorious. She has of 12 stars, though. The crown is of 12 stars. It isn't even a golden crown. It's crown of 12 stars. And I'm, I'm going to show you why that's important. And what's under her feet? So she has linen or cotton, white, right? She has a crown of what? Stars. And what's under her feet? All part of God's creation. Natural beauty. <laughs> it's all natural. There is no paint on her. See, there are no gold and whatever and pearls or whatever. Are you listening to me? She's plain but beautiful to God in the sight of God. Are you listening to me? She has creation under her feet. She's adorned with natural nature. I don't hear nobody. It suddenly gets quiet. Why does it get quiet in this church all of a sudden? What, what be going on? Tell me what's happening. Y'all be plotting to kill me? <laughs> yeah. 
Then what does Jesus represent, use to represent truth from apostasy? Something we should already know is right and wrong. Yes. So he uses the obvious to explain the spiritual. Amen. There's no way you would call this woman a true church, and I ain't read a scripture yet. You didn't hear me. I ain't read a scripture yet. Just from looking at her, you know she's not of God. I'm trying to make a subtle point, but if y'all gonna make me say it, I'll say it now. Just by looking at her, you can tell which one is true and which one is false. And someone will ask me what's so important about dress. Because long before you get to the Bible study, you represent. The way you dress represents. It doesn't mean you holy or not holy. Are you with me? It's a representation of who you serve. Who you're in love with. Are you with me? If you're in love with the world, your dress going to represent the world. If you hold it on to worldly things, you're going to have worldly garments. That's why Jesus says, he that is holy, let him be holy still. But he that is filthy, filthy, that's an appearance. Filthy is not an attitude, it's an appearance. He that is filthy, let him be filthy still. I'm, I'm, I'm about to turn on my vanishing belt. I bought my vanishing belt tonight. You know, a Superman have a utility belt. Batman got a utility belt. I got a vanishing belt. I, I hit this button right here and I vanish. <laughs> we are playing games in the last days. But God already knew it. Revelation is a last day book for God's last day people. And one of the last issues, because this is the 17th and 18th chapter of 22 chapters in Revelation that God deals with among his people is the issue of dress. You're going to discover three things about the false church and you're going to discover three things about the last day church that are going to be problems. The Bible says she wore scarlet colors, she was purple and had scarlet color. Okay? Scarlet color, that was in her face. That's makeup. She had pearls and gold and precious stones. That's jewelry. And then she was a whore. Fornication. Sex outside of marriage. It would be in the church in the last days. And God says it's part of the great apostasy. Amen. So, am I going to take it off you? Nope. Am I going to make you do right? Nope. Can you wear it after this revival? Yes. Because I'm not your judge. You don't have to stand before me. You're going to have to stand before a holy, pure, righteous, self-sacrifice. You can't give up a little ring? And you think God going to heal you when he gave up his life? Rep 
representing a godly marriage when you wear wedding rings? You're representing the apostasy. It's a sign, it's a sign, jewelry is a sign of apostasy. Wearing makeup is a sign of apostasy. Improper clothing is a sign of apostasy. And Jesus used these signs to show us the mystery of Babylon. Ooh, I wish more people would say amen. Because I told you I'm trying to get you clean and white. You see the only ones that stand with the King of King and Lord Lord are clean and white. You can't have no jelly on the road. They missed that, Simi. They, they, they ain't quick like us, Simi. They ain't hang out with us. They don't know what that means. Yeah, you can't have no jelly on the road. God is not going to let you enter the gates with one spot. You're going to have to take off the whole thing. So now he's saying, take it off. You got a jelly spot. I sent this crazy, homegrown, skinny, whatever else y'all been calling me since I've been here. I sent him here to tell you to take it off while you got time. See, if you take it off while you got time, you can do something with it. Bible says, who are these? Revelation, who made it in? The angel said, these are they that washed the robes. Got that jelly stain out. That's talking to church people because worldly people ain't got no robe. The only people who got robe are those who are supposed to be clothed in his righteousness. That's us. If some of us got spots, we need to put it in the blood and stop worrying about yourself and stop being selfish. Some of us going to hell just because we're selfish. Me, 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 my, my, my. It's my, it's my business. When you come to Christ, you ain't got no business. You on the king's business. Dress matters. I wish preachers would stop lying. I wish teachers would stop lying. I wish members would stop lying. This church is still the church of a true and a living and a holy God. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. The only stain can pass by the all-seeing eye of God is a blood stain. I'm trying to get out of here alive. Now a great sign appeared where? Uh huh. Hey, see, this woman's in heaven. She's heavenly. Husband, when the last time you told your wife you were heavenly? <laughs> but y'all some sorry husbands. See, I, I, I could be free on this one. I've been up saying, yes, I just told her last night. <laughs> heavenly. Don't let me ask your wives. They're going to tell her when I. You got to learn how to talk to her like you saved. Amen. See, saved men, they don't mind being soft. Same men don't have to be hard. Because they got, they got guarding angels, so they don't need to be hard. Same men can be sweet and kind, considerate. Hello? Your wife need to hear that, that she's heavenly. It'll put some seasoning on your food. Yeah. 
that meal will be hot and you won't have to put it in the microwave all the time. to do it, boy. I'm trying to tell you. I, I got my wife fooled. <laughs> that girl thinks she fine. She thinks she pretty. She thinks she all that and then some with a bag of m and and chips and Doritos with nacho cheese and nacho spread. I got her convinced. So on Sunday morning, I don't have to walk downstairs to get breakfast. Breakfast walk upstairs to me. When I came here, I didn't have to pack my suitcase. When I came home, my stuff was packed. She took it down the stairs and rolled it out to the car and threw it in the truck. Like a real baggage carrier. Boom! Cause my man going somewhere. <laughs> I'm trying to help some brother out today. <laughs> you treat him right, the, the boy. Look at, you treat him right. Just like when Jesus treats you right, you feel good. Man, you treat a woman right. You won't be able to stand the result. <laughs> my wife go out there. I'm, I'm washing my car. And she thinking about how good I am to it. She bring a chair out there and say, sit down, let me wash the car. <laughs> and I tell you no lie. She sit right here. I'll tell you the same thing. And y'all say, she crazy. No, she not. She investing. Cause she know what she got. Amen. 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 Some of y'all men need to be shaming yourself. Cause if the CIA or the FBI came to your house to prove that you live there and dust it for fingerprints, dust the vacuum cleaner, the washing machine, you couldn't even prove you live there. You ain't never touch it. No DNA in the whole house. Iron and board clean. <laughs> How I get way over there. Lord have mercy. I'm talking about the pool of heaven. Amen. A woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, like we already discussed, and her head had a garland of what? 12 stars. Then being with what? Child, she cried out in what? And in pain to give what? Birth. And there she is again. That beautiful, clean woman. Don't let anybody tell you that you don't look good the way God made you. When you wear makeup, you're saying, I don't look good. I need help. That's why I didn't, I didn't have no girl who needed some help. Because I didn't know where the help would stop. <laughs> Say I do, you know, and at the altar when you go in the bedroom afterwards and you're up there in that honeymoon suite and then you find out how much help you got. <laughs> start peeling off fingernails. <laughs> then she start peeling off eyelashes. <laughs> then she hit the hair. Pull out the teeth. <laughs> 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 Ellis, y'all better be careful if she around here wearing all that stuff. You don't know where she hiding. I don't even know if I got this thing on the right side now. It's all right. You get the point. Amen. Amen. Better get you some natural looking stuff. So you know it is what it is. <laughs> then 
and one of the seven angels who had seven bowls, listen to this, came and did what? Talk with me, what? Saying to me, see, he reveals his secrets to his servants. They talking. Could you imagine having a conversation with an angel? Come, I will show you the what? Of the great harlot who sits on what? On many waters. Who with the kings of the earth have committed what? Fornication. You see, God is now taking physical sins and applying it spiritual to spiritual situations. So we know whatever this woman does, it can't be right. Because God's church ain't no hoe. I don't believe Jesus would marry a hoe. What's that? I'm nervous. <laughs> they got paranoid up in here. And the earth committed fornication. They commit kings of the earth committed fornication with her. And the inhabitants of the earth were made what? So she's a hoe. Huh? She's a fornicating hoe. And she's a drunk fornicating hoe. See, y'all don't understand. I'm preaching to young people now. See, this is how you help them understand. They understood that. But when y'all get in here with all this disemboweled and indigenous and, and, and didist, they, they, they leave here more confused than they can. But I guarantee you they know now what the true church is and what it's not. I learned how to teach prophecy to young people. Yeah. Drunk with the wine of her fornication. And that ain't the wine that's good for the stomach sake. That's the apostasy wine. There's two kinds of wine. Apostate wine. That's for hoes. There's the wine of the fruit of the vine. One does not inebriate. The other one drunk makes you drunk. And the effects of drunkenness leads to fornication. That's why David tried to get Uriah drunk. I got to say it, I got to say it in Delray, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> I am crazy. <laughs> For Jesus, though. For Jesus. So this is it. Describe. And just because of why she looked, we knew something about her. But now we see her resume. So it ain't just a reputation. It's a lifestyle. Amen. See, a seven day advanced is not a denomination. It's a lifestyle. You're not a seven day advanced because you come to church in the seven day advanced church. You're not a seven day advanced until you live the lifestyle. Because remember, it's about character. Yes. Touch your name and say, we got to live a life. Yeah. yeah. To get eternal life, you must live the life. Yes. Am I making sense? Yes. 
It's a lifestyle. So he carried me away in the what? Into the wilderness. And I saw a woman doing what? Uh huh. I saw her, John said, which was full of the names of what? Blasphemy. Now he's connecting her. Showing you where her actions come from. Showing you where those dresses and necklaces and all the other stuff she has on, it's rooted in something. Blasphemy. Blasphemy is when you put something in the place of God. That's why the third commandment says, Thou shalt not make unto thyself any graven image. Thou shalt not bow down to them, nor serve them. When you wear jewelry, you break the third commandment. It's blasphemy. Because its roots are in something that's not holy. I showed you the other day, it came from paganism. The right ring. Do you know what it means when you wear red ring? The meaning of that is that you, and if you have a diamond on top of it, there's a deeper meaning. When you wear the plain wedding band, you're saying your union is attributed to the goddess of love, Venus. It's the sign of Venus, the wedding band, the gold band around the finger is a sign of Venus from the pagan society. Come on, Dad. And then, if you put the diamond on top, you're saying now you play tribute to the goddess, god of fertility and bless my children or the fruit of the my loins. You ask a false god to bless your children. Then when you allow the man to put it on your finger, you are testified to him in a will and testament that you are legally now his property. That's why Prince William did not put on a ring because he's the future king and he cannot be subject to anyone. The reason we don't use rings in our ceremonies because we say it is not the man who is joining himself to a woman. We say what God has joined. So you don't belong to that Negro. If you don't treat your right, leave him. You're not his property. Not under God. I'm trying to free up. We go around talking about, I'm the man in this house. Say, no, you're not. If you ain't living the lifestyle, I only can submit to you as you submit to God because God my bigger boss. Boy, he show sure harping on that ring. No, y'all harping on the ring. Y'all make me preach it. If it wasn't up in here, I would go into something else. And I've been preaching it all these nights and some of y'all still wearing it. What you waiting on? The signs? You waiting on the signs of the times to take it off? You waiting for probation to close? You waiting for Jesus to come and prove you right or me right? Keep on waiting. Because he is coming. And somebody right. There cannot be two diametrically opposed opinions in the room and they both be right. Somebody wrong, somebody right. Either you can wear it 
or you can. If you want to take your chances in the judgment after all the lights in the Bible, help yourself. But as for me in my house, Some of y'all husbands not to be unafraid of your wife. Don't let that stuff in your household. She will end up tell her to take it off. But you can't talk to your wife because you ain't treating her right. I'm sorry. I can talk to my wife that way because I treat that girl right. I treat her right where it counts. I make money, I don't even put it in the bank. I give, I walk right up to my wife, just like a good man. And I give her all my money. I don't withhold a cent. My wife gives me allowance. And tell me don't spend it all in the one place. Cause you ain't getting no more. That's how you be a man in your home. You're not a man in your home because you order, give orders. That's a general. A man learns how to make it work. Even when he has to give a little bit to get everything else. See, I want to give to my wife because I want to gain eternal life for her. And I want her to be able to hear my counsel. So I treat her real well. So when I have to talk to her about something important, she'll listen. But some of y'all wives are already in combat mode. <laughs> For the first word come out your mouth, don't come here with that. Why? Because of the way you train them. know there was that much to Revelation 17, did you? <laughs> Having seven heads and ten horns. We've seen that somewhere before. The harlot woman of Revelation 17 represents what? What else represented the false system of religion? I showed you that when the lights went out. The beast. Remember I told you the mark of the beast is not a day? We saw that? It was a false system of religion. So this woman is connected to the beast. That's why she's sitting on the beast. They together. They're hombres. <laughs> the beast which upon which she rides represents the what? Now you're starting to grow. Here we're about to grow here tonight. We're going to take another step. It's the state that she sits on. Now she represents the apostate church. The beast represents the apostate state. Okay? Remember we said it is a religious and political. And the Bible is saying now in the last days, just before Jesus comes, this woman will sit on this beast. But they won't do it for political reasons. The issue in Revelation is worship. State and church are precious what? Now they're both precious gifts of God. We are, we are blessed to live in the United States. Well, we can come out here like this and say Obama is a black man and not get shot. Are you listening to me? We can also say Jesus is the Son of God and not get shot. Well, there's some countries, if they say something about their leader, they get shot. If they say something about religion, they get shot. 
So it's a blessing. It's a gift from God to live in a place where you can sit like this and learn in freedom the truths of the Bible. So God bless America. But the state being desecrated becomes what? The state, she says, is going to get more corrupt. Politicians will become more corrupt. That's why when you go and ask, can we hold the tent? You shouldn't get mad because somebody said no. You should rejoice. That means Jesus is about to come. all bent up out of shape about that what you gonna do in the real time of trouble here and they chain these doors and you can't come sit in these pews and the preacher can't preach a sermon and the keynote choir is suspended indefinitely and they hunting you down like they did Bin Laden and there's no hiding place down here See, God's giving you the little test to see how you act now. Is your character able to handle a little disappointment? Lord, have mercy. Or you going to turn around and talk about the leaders and act all ugly. Are you listening to me? Or is the character of Christ going to come out of you and you're going to take that week anyway? Because there's somebody out there who just needs to know Jesus loves him. And whether it's a week or a month, whatever time you got left, use it for the glory of God. You don't need six and twelve and forty-four weeks to introduce somebody to Jesus. Pentecost happened in one day. And God says it's gonna happen again. It's called the latter rain. I will pour out my spirit among all flesh. Who are you to tell God he can't win souls in a week? The Ethiopian eunuch ran along the chariot. Who who was that who ran with him? Uh, Philip, thank you. Somebody reading their Bible. Philip ran along. He said he ran and while he was on his way commuting. Philip was his FM. 101.5. Hot 105. It was hot out there. <laughs> Y'all ain't got a sense of humor. But anyway, he, he preached the gospel to him while he was commuting the work. And when Philip finished, before he went inside to do his job, he says, I want to be baptized. Philip say you can't be baptized right now. We ain't in church. Church ain't in session. He said, session. He said, ain't there some water over there? Water is wet. But understand what you're looking at when you see a city council do that. Don't get mad. Pray for them. They're only fulfilling prophecy. And you should know better because you're a prophetic generation. You shouldn't know what you're looking at. But prophecy is being fulfilled in your face and you acting like the devil? You better be glad they still giving time. Soon it's going to be no. Soon it's going to be if we catch you. you even walking around talking about some Jesus Christ. They're going to pass an ordinance that forbids you to pray. So while you got time, use it. I was telling somebody today, when Moses was going to lead a whole nation, he said, I can't do it. I ain't got nothing to work with. See, that's what you're saying. Never tell God you ain't got nothing to work with. What did the Lord tell Moses? What's that in your hand? Take what you have in your hand. God don't need 
need a week to save Delray? Jonah made three days journey in one day to preach to Nineveh and a whole city got saved in one sermon. Where is your faith? You think it's our program that saved people. You think it's our methods that save people. You think it's our preaching and teaching that save people and how we put Bible workers here. And there. It's not by might nor by power. It's by God's spirit. You don't tell God how to finish this work. You just do the work. But whatever you do, your reaction to the public ought to always be Christ-like. You represent something higher than yourself. Now y'all know I ain't coming back no more, right? Because the church apostatizing becomes the what? Yeah, it's what you do that makes you the harlot. The woman was arrayed in what? And what else? And adorned with what? Uh-huh. And precious stones and what? There it is, those three deadly sins in that verse in the scripture. Having in her hand a what? Oh, Full of what? Oh, Not only is she dressed to kill. <laughs> well, I tell you, y'all ain't ready for me. Not only is she dressed to kill, but she got more stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Abominations, look up. Stuff you can't see. This calls for a mind with what? The seven heads are what? On which the woman sits. The fallen church system of Revelation 17 has what? Of what? Come on, let's grow together tonight. Don't say you've never been taught this before anymore. Amen? It says the purple is scarlet and she sits on what? Of seven years. A city. So municipality. So the, what she sits on, called the beast, is a municipality, a city, a government. The golden cup of wine in her hand represents what? All right, intoxication. That's the danger of false teaching. It feels good, but it puts you out of control. People been serving drinks for a long time in the Adventist church. Open bar. I wonder how I know all that, don't you? I read it in a magazine. And we are drinking and sipping, getting a shot. Hello? Just a little bit won't hurt. Do you get a little bit more? Hello? A little over here, a little there. Here, a little, there, a little, every, I mean, little. But little becomes much. It piles on. Until intoxication. See? False doctrine. Comes and creeps into the midst of us, and we all walking around drunk. I don't say nothing to you because I got sins of my own, so I can't say nothing to you because of my sin. Hello? So let's hide each other's stuff. You don't tell on me, I won't tell on you. Then anybody who tells on anybody, we make them the villain. And 
and the church becomes drunk. And on her forehead, a name was written, Mystery. Babylon the what? Uh-huh. See, you have to understand why that's the mystery. You have to go back to Genesis 11. And I don't have that one up here. I've, I was going to do it the other night, the Tower of Babel, but I don't have time tonight, so I'll just go through it. it, it the Tower of Babel was this. The Tower of Babel is a powerful, powerful lesson. Okay? Because you got to understand what's happening here. And remember, I told you that every prophecy has a twofold fulfillment. It has its literal fulfillment. I'm shooting at 9.30. Is that all right? Because this is my last night. I got to wrap this up. Uh, the, the literal fulfillment, um, and then it's eschatological. Remember that word? Yes. That comes from the Greek word, the eschaton, which means last things or last days. Okay? So, the story of Babel is important to understand Babylon. Okay? Because what was done at Babel will be reversed in Revelation. What do I mean? The Bible says that after the antediluvian flood, that these people who lived after the flood united themselves in purpose. In that unity, they decided to build an apparatus that would go from the ground into the heavens and reach unto heaven. That if the world would flood again, they could climb up into this tower and escape the flood levels. Are you with me? Are you with me? Now this is deep because you got to understand levels. I mean the highest mountain, it had to be higher because everything was underwater. So you think about Mount Everest and Mount Fuji, it had to be higher than that and yet stand. The currents that would, you know what kind of currents had to be in the flood? You ever see a river go mad? Now that's just a river, a little piece of water. Can you imagine the whole world underwater? The kind of currents that would generate? It would have to be strong enough to stand those currents, tall enough to be above any level of ground, and high enough that everybody would agree it reached into heaven. That's a technological and engineering marvel. And they were able to do it because they were all of one purpose. Now remember what I said. Revelation was Babel in reverse. So they started with unity. And so White says, as they began to build the tower, God saw that they were going to succeed. Now, you're doing something wrong. You're doing something wrong, but because you together, God fears your success. Y'all not getting it. God, see, God knows everything, so he knew they would succeed. So, so White says, he began to confound their language. And they would call down to the, as the tower got higher, they would send a message. They didn't have a cell phone, so they had to send a message verbally to the bottom. And by the time that message would get to the bottom, God confounded the language so that they would order 17 two by fours. Instead, they would get seven. It's by the time they got all the way back up to the top, that man been waiting all day for 17 two by four, and all he got was seven? Now you gotta remember, this is Babel, Babylon, black people. Oh, y'all don't know us? You sit for 17? And nigga at the bottom since you seven? And you up here in this heat all day waiting on them 17? And you get seven? So the wife says, anger. Now, the anger coupled with confusion and misunderstanding was the fall of Babel. You didn't hear me. Anger coupled with confusion and misunderstandings was the fall of Babel. Babylon 
has fallen. The second angel's message. The church. Three angels' message is about this church. Babylon has fallen. Why? Because we got angry people. We're full of having misunderstandings. And confusion is in the church. And that is the fall of Babylon. So revelation comes at the fall of Babylon. Are you listening? Yes. And says it's time for the church to come back together. Yes. To come back together, we got to get rid of misunderstandings. Yes. We got to get rid of confusion. Yes. And we got to get rid of the anger. Yes. Then the church will stand united yes. and be able to do great works. Yes. Babylon the Great. The mother of all heartless. We know Babylon to be the, the power of Revelation 13. Says she's a mother. You can't be a mother unless you got babies. Right? So the Bible says, whoever that beast is in Revelation 13 that came out of the four beasts to Daniel will have offspring. That is the mother of the apostate church. Then she'll have churches that come out of her. That's why I said you better thank God we're not a Protestant church because Protestant churches came out of the mother harlot. She's a mother of harlots, little harlots. She's a hoe, her children hoes. And they all have something that unite them, a mark. The signs of apostasy. Apostate worship, apostate dress, apostate diet. I love y'all, Delray. The mother of harlots and the abominations of the what? So even the worldly practices are in the church. Mystery. Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth. John says, I saw it. Now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times, here's the application. Some will what? You can't depart from the faith if you've never been in the faith. The Bible says that there would be a need for revivals like this, inviting people back to church because there are some who've departed. And they will come back in the latter days. I thought somebody would say amen. That's a promise. They're going to come back. But the reason you ain't saying amen because they're going to take your seat. Because you jiving and playing and being halfway in and halfway out. But let me tell you something. When they come back to this church, they coming back with a vengeance. They already know it ain't nothing out there no more. They already see what the world has done to them. And when they come back, they coming back for real. And you going to be the one run out this time. That's why Jesus said, vengeance is mine. You ran them out, then their purity is going to run you out. Hallelujah. Giving heed to what? That's how you're going to come. You're going to be deceived right here in the pew. And doctrines of what? There are doctrines that are going to come in the church that are sponsored by the devil. Not in the Baptist church, in the Adventist church. And you won't be able to tell the difference. Why? Because you don't study. You don't come to prayer meeting. Does it look like this every Wednesday night? Yes, it does. Stop lying on people. Evidently, you can come. I 
That's my freedom dance. I'm free now. It's a shame. You stay home by choice. And these are the last days. And the devil's now sowing doctrines of demons. And you're not studying the word in Bible study? But you're going to stand. You ain't going to leave the church. I'm here to stay. Born Adventist, die Adventist. You're right, you're going to die an Adventist. <laughs> Be this close to glory and miss it. You used to sing that song, Can't Go to Heaven on the Roller Skate. Because you're going to skate right past old Pearly Gate. The devil has doctrine. It sounds holy. It smells holy. Are you listening to me? But it can't stand the test of the word. I done tore up my Bible. Y'all got to buy me another Bible. I use this thing so much it's falling apart. I love the word. What's going to keep you? Not your office. Not your longevity. The word of God. Because the devil's last assault on this church, daughters of Zion. And if I never see you again, I hope I see you in the kingdom. His main assault, hear it and hear it well, is going to be on the word of God. And if you don't know how to rightly divide the words of truth, because you don't study... You're going to be deceived by deceiving spirits. And you are no match for those spirits. This is where the warfare is fought. Who will stand on God's word? In the right church, but ain't got no word. Holding high office, but don't know the word. That's where the deception is coming from. Not Sunday worship. You can't deceive somebody who never knew the truth. <laughs> deceive means you being talked out of what you already should know is true. The deception is not going to be on the outside. Men are going to stand right behind his desk and tell you, it's all right. God don't mind. It's a new day. That's old school. Just come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Don't worry about nothing else. It doesn't matter. It's not important. They're going to stand right here under these lights and tell you that. And because all you want to do is get your praise on, you're going to shout. See how you're not shouting now? The truth comes, you sit down. But when these false prophets come, you're going to be rejoicing, kicking over the pews. Because it sounds good. It's good in the ear. The Bible says it tastes good in the mouth, but then it sours in the belly. That's the great deception. It's going to be in the church. Men who carry credentials will stand in God's desk and proclaim the acceptable year. But to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, there is no light in them. Devil got doctrine too. I told you everything God has. The devil's got a counterfeit. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Some of y'all are fulfilling prophecy. Bible preaching, 
preacher come through here, you want to stone him. Yeah. Mad at him. Yeah. Go home to my, he preached about me. I wish a preacher would preach about me. Show me my sins. I'd rather be shown now. Yeah. 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 We used to rejoice when we hear the truth. Now we accuse the one who brings it. It's a sign of the times, and you can't stop prophecy. The Bible says, in this church, in daughter of Zion, there will be people that even when sound doctrine is preached, they will not endure it. They will not embrace it. But according to their own desires, Because they want to do what they want to do. And they will turn their ears away from the truth. Get out of here with that mess. That's what's wrong with the church. I want to hear that. Get out of here. All we need is love and a sandwich. <laughs> they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fable. They will hear the truth and they will hear the false story. And instead of following the truth, they're going to eat up the false story. Yes, you can. The Obama doctrine. Yes, you can. Can you wear it? Yes, you can. Can you eat it? Yes, you can. Can I get remarried? Yes, you can. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. I got my vanish button still. It's still ready. See it right there? Everything is yes, you can. Yes, you can. New day. Wait five years. Five years don't change the truth. Five years ago it's the same truth it is today. Time does not alter truth. Truth can alter time. Truth can alter time. You don't believe me? There was a prophet that was running out of time. And he spoke the truth. And the sun stood still. Holy Bible, sanctify them yes. through your truth. Yes. The only way we're going to get ready for Jesus to come is to be sanctified. Yes. And y'all thought that was for Pentecostals. <laughs> we all got to be sanctified. Yes. And your rules don't sanctify me. Yes. And your excuses don't sanctify you. Yes. There's only one thing that sanctifies us. The word is truth. In other words, if you write a paper and you read the paper, the position paper, because they come out these days, Lil Willie, they got position papers. And then you have a Bible in your hand. The position paper say, yes, you can. The Bible says, no, you can't. You got to make a decision. Right? This text says, sanctify yourself. Set yourself apart. Follow the word. The word is true. Not the position paper. Ooh, it's quiet. Why? Because some of y'all was planning your third marriage. <laughs> See, I love being an admin. This is the best time in the world to be an Adventist preacher. The world got questions, we got answers. I could stand here and boldly proclaim it. 
and my check still in the mail. I don't need nobody to lift an offering to eat. I can tell it. And even if they don't lift the offering and send the check, I can still tell it. Because the one who called me made me a promise that the bread and water, sure, might have to eat it in a cave, but it's sure. I don't have to fear nobody, fear no man, fear no church. And the day's coming where folk going to rise up and start shooting the preacher. I know it's coming. If they shooting up school children, what's going to stop them from shooting the preacher? But I've already made up my mind. I've already made up my mind. If death can't hold Jesus, I ain't got nothing to worry about. All I got to do is hang on to his hymn. Great time to be an Adventist preacher. The word is true. The word is true. Even the spirit of prophecy is not the truth. The word is true. The spirit of prophecy has to meet the Bible test. And I have, now, now before you get all happy, I haven't met nothing she said that contradict the Bible. And you can't find it either because it's a spirit of prophecy. And the same spirit that wrote the spirit of prophecy wrote the Bible. And to accuse the spirit of prophecy is the same as accusing the word of God. Oh, some of them amens went silent. It's the same spirit. He didn't have to change nothing because he was there in the beginning. Because yes. he said he moved upon the face of the deep. Yes. <laughs> so he was there when it all started. Yes. Lord have mercy. Yes. We've already been through that. That's Babel. Man made Babylon then becomes man made what? That's what Babylon is. Any religion that's man-made that does not come from the word of God Amen. is Babylon. Amen. Amen. You got to get that point. I can't go no further. Babylon is not the Catholic Church. Did you hear what I said? So we don't teach that as Seven Adventists. And if you teach that, it's a false doctrine. Now the first beast of Revelation 13 represents Catholicism. But Babylon is not the Catholic Church. It's any man-made religion. Any type thing that's a matter of faith that came from the lips of man and not the mouth of God is Babylon. That's why all of these things I've been addressing tonight is in Revelation 17 and 18. Because when you wear these things, eat these things, do these things, go these places, you are participating in that system called Babylon. You are in Babylon. <laughs> That's why I'm telling you, you can be a Seventh-day Adventist and be in Babylon. Two people are gonna get the mark of the beast. Those who refuse to worship him, in Sunday worship Amen. on the true day and those who are in Babylon Amen. so the question is can a seven day Adventist get the mark of the beast yes you can yes. if you're in Babylon you're going to receive the mark because the mark is not a day I taught you that the mark is being disloyal to God Amen. Whether it be through worship or lifestyle. Babylon is about the lifestyle. That's why it's important what you do Sunday through Friday. Some of y'all think the four commandments say six days of labor and do all your dirt.
Six days you labor, do all your dirt, but the seventh day is the Sabbath. The only day you even look holy is on Saturday. Was to walk up on some of you in your job, wouldn't even recognize you. Done been made over. Is that such a. No, can't be. That's not the way she comes to church. Man made stuff. God gonna accept it. God gonna, you gonna make God accept you. It ain't gonna happen. Jesus says, I'm watching my church. And he is head of the body, the church, who is beginning the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. The true church of God is the only organization so big that his body is upon the earth, but his head is in heaven. <laughs> who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worship? So that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. The devil wants to be God. That's how this whole warfare started. I will ascend above the heavens. I will sit on his throne. Remember that? When he was Lucifer? He didn't stop yet. That fool, though he defeated, he still fighting like he going to win something. He need to retire. been fighting this fight for a long time. That's why God said one day I'm going to settle it. When I come back on my white horse, I ain't coming as no baby this time because that confused people. This time I'm coming to settle it. I'm king of kings. Lord of lords. Don't get it twisted. Devil wants to sit in his seat. And everything around us, led by this great apostasy, is trying to lead us down that road, no matter how subtle. Babylon, the center of what? Jesus says, don't make any other gods before me. Don't carve any images or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above. All those charm bracelets and stuff with the moons and the fish and all that. He said, don't do that. In the beneath the earth, or that is a water under the earth, you shall not bow down to them nor serve them. That means wear them. For I am the Lord your God. I am a what? He said, I ain't got no, you won't have no other lover with me. Let me catch you in the bed with somebody else. I'll kill you. And he mean it. Because in Revelation 21, he said there was a leg of fire. He mean it when he said he's going to kill you. Because he's jealous. I'm a jealous God. <laughs> I must get this. Babylon was the primal source from which all these systems of idolatry flow. Babylon, the center of false teachings about death. And he said to me, turn again and you will see the greater abomination that they are. So he brought me into the door of the north gate of the Lord's house. And to my dismay, women were sitting there weeping for Tammuz. For the living know that they what? But the dead know not what? Nor any more what? For the memory of them is what? Uh-huh. Amen? That's why we don't believe what Harry Potter's... That's why we don't do that stuff. And you ought not be looking at anything on television that's about to deceive you about mummies and monsters from the dead. 
disfigured creation and all this kind of stuff you, because the devil's setting you up. You are being desensitized for the great deception. Priest. What is that? Y'all better get real. Devil showing you all them images, then when you see a great deception, it won't even bother you. It won't even bother you. You can stand there and watch it all, blood and guts. The dead do not praise what? That's why mama ain't singing in the choir. <laughs> Lord have mercy. <laughs> Nor any who go down where? This doctrine can be traced through the muddy channels of the corrupted Christianity, the perversion of Judaism, pagan philosophy, superstitious idolatry, to the great instigator of the mischief of the Garden of Eden, the Protestants barred it from the Catholics, the Catholics from the Pharisees, the Pharisees from the pagans, can be traced back to the pagans, and the pagans from the old serpent himself, who first preached the doctrine amid the lowly bowels of paradise to an audience all all too willing to hear and to heed a new and fascinating theology, you shall not surely die. When you trace it back, a lie always can be traced back to its father. If you're telling lies, you can be traced back to your father. If you're living a lie, you can be traced back to your father. If you have fallen in some of who are called Christians, with some who are called Christians, but who do not admit this truth of the resurrection and venture to blaspheme the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, who say there is no resurrection of the dead, and that their souls when they die are taken to heaven and do not imagine that they are Christians, it was the concept of the Babylonians that an immortal soul left the body at death and lived lived on. Babylon is fallen. Therefore, the Babylonians established a system of what? Gods and what? Goddess. Worshipping the what? Of those who supposedly what? And out of this evolved a community of saints that you find when you repeat the Apostles' Creed. That's why we don't repeat it. It is not the affirmation of our faith. Amen. Neither is the Sabbath. Amen. Oh, y'all didn't know that? The Sabbath is not the affirmation of my faith. This church is not established upon the fact that the Sabbath exists. The Sabbath existed before this church. This church came out of prophecy. The affirmation of our faith is found in Daniel 8. Unto 2,300 years, the sanctuary shall be cleansed. 1844 is the significant establishment of this church, in which our faith was revived from the old truths and landmarks that identified us as the remnant church of, never mind, I'm wasting my breath. <laughs> the Sabbath is just a sign of those who are being obedient to God. All right, I can skip those pictures. The center of sun worship, Babylon. All these things come out of Babylon, okay? Which gets into the stuff that, uh, I'm, I'm gonna skip some of this because in the interest of time. To coincide the pagans to nominal Christianity, Rome, pursuing its usual policy, took measures to get Christians and pagans, pagan festivals amalgamated. You know what that means? Blended. They wanted to put them together. Okay? Because there was so much unrest. Because some of y'all want to say that Sunday worship came out of Constantine. And when you tell people that, you're going to have a hard time proving it in history because it's not true.
Constantine is not responsible for Sunday worship. Constantine is responsible for the amalgamation of Christianity and paganism. And to get paganism, Christianity, and to get and to get paganism and Christianity now far sunk into idolatry in this as in so many other things to shake hands. Okay? Christendom is indebted to the Catholic Church for the institution of Sunday as the Sabbath day. In keeping Sunday, non-Catholics are simply following the practice of the Catholic Church. The harlot is a mother. And their birth certificate is rooted in Sunday worship. A tradition and not a what? Man-made religion. Babylon. It's many things. What a pity Sunday comes branded with the mark of what? And christened, christened with the name of the what? Then adopted and sanctioned by the what? And bequeathed as what? Uh-huh. That's the Baptist. They, 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 they admit this. See that? That's Baptist. That's in their manual. They church manual. I'm serious. That's their church man. I got that out of their church man. Ezekiel 20 verse 12. Moreover, I gave them my what? To be what? That's right. That they might know that I am what? Uh-huh. Her priest have what? Violated my law and profaned my what? They have not what? Between the what? That's what those priests have done. Nor have they what? The difference between what? See, the church of God is supposed to know the difference. I said the church of God is supposed to know the difference. Should be asking why. Should be standing. And they have hidden their what? So that I am? We're making God look bad. Think to what? What is proposed to make an erasure of heaven-born code? Is the eternal tablet of the law to be defaced by what? He who proposes such an act should fortify himself by reasons as holy as what? And as mighty as what? That's the abiding Sabbath, George Eliot, page 123. Reason and sense, this Cardinal Gibbons, a Catholic mirror, demand the acceptance of what? Of these what? Remember what I told you? Two diametrically opposed views both can't be right. He's saying the same thing. See, he said it and you believe it. I said it and y'all went right. Okay. Either Protestantism and keeping what? Uh huh. Either Protestantism and the keeping holy of Saturday or Catholicism. Catholicity and the keeping of, of holy of what? Compromise is what? Uh huh. The true church. And, the, and he cried mildly with a loud voice saying what? So is Babylon going to be successful? No. It, we know that already from Genesis 11. It's going to fall. Okay? You're not on the winning side if you're in any of those categories I've explained tonight of Babylon. Okay? And I heard another voice from heaven saying what? What are we supposed to do? Are we supposed to uh, hang out till Jesus comes if we're in Babylon? No. He says, come out of her, my people. My people. He talking to the church. Amen. He talking to you. Amen. There's stuff we got to do before we start accusing the world. Yes. Amen. There's stuff we got to get rid of. Yes. There's stuff we got to reform. Yes. 
this stuff we got to simply quit doing. Come out. Leave it. Lest you share in her what? And lest you receive her? That's serious stuff. It ain't just be people who get suddenly the mark of the beast. See, that's why I'm saying we, we like to preach this mark of the beast thing and make us comfortable. It's going to be them Sunday keepers. And the, the law going to rain down on them, the plagues. And they're going to get sores and they're going to get hit with hailstones and they're going to do that. Lord, they ain't the only ones going to get hit. Amen. My people who are in Babylon and got these man-made rules to their religion and have accepted man's ideas of religion, they gonna get the plagues too. Amen. You ain't safe because you in here. You gotta live the lifestyle. The first justification of the woman in her being called out of battle in the harlot when judgment is about to fall, the apostate Christendom, Babylon, is not to be converted, but to be what? God ain't trying to convert Babylon. You got to choose to come out. He's not going to appear to you and tell you take a ring off. It's not going to happen. Because he's already revealed it in his word. And he don't repeat himself. He's not going to appear to you and tell you dress right and lower that skirt, hemline, and, and stop showing your cleavage to the deacons. He's not going to appear to you in some dream, in some vision. He says, I'm not going to do it. It's already been revealed. He's not here to try to run a crusade in Babylon. He's going to destroy Babylon. He said, you better recognize and get out. In every apostate world conforming church, there are some of God's invisible and true. That's why you better get off them Baptists. Get off them Pentecostal people. Some of them going to make it in before you. In every apostate world, uh, conforming church, there are some of God's invisible and true church. That makes some of y'all mad, don't it? The Baptist going to make it in before me? Show your eye. <laughs> if they would be safe, they must what? Come out. Come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins. Ah, oh, my friends, I had another slide, but I, I, I think I lost some of it in the transfer. Now, Sam, put that last thing up there, and we're done. Listen, folk, I am done. I've done all I can do. I can't go another night. So the king demands an audience, and I have to give her one. I must go. This same evangelist shall be taken up from you in like manner. <laughs> I hope, Delray, that I don't leave here an enemy. I hope it because I came in love. I love this church. I grew up here. It's all I know. And if I want any church to be saved when Jesus comes, it's Daughters of Zion. I have done this all around the world. And I used to complain to God in some of the airports. I said, I can do this everywhere. Delray, my home church. They won't even invite me. So he shut me up. He invited me. I hope you have invited the message. I hope you accept the message. I can't make you do anything. And I didn't come to point fingers at anybody. I, I don't have time for that. I'm way past that. I, I, want, I want to let you know I love everybody here. 
And when I hear things about the church, it saddens me. Because this is home. You were, <laughs> this is my roots. This is what I represent. And we got to make it together. I don't want to go to heaven and Delray's not there. I want to see you in the kingdom. Are you with me? And I know we have a job to do. And I know things are tightening up. It's tightening up everywhere. But while you have time, do the work. Don't complain. Don't be so busy complaining about the time you have that you miss doing the work. Let God handle his church. You just be his witnesses. Do what he's called you to do. He said, you are my witnesses. Now, I came to explain this because evidently it was needed. I, I did not ask to do this and I did not know what to do. I, I, even when I landed Sunday, I still hadn't even, somebody said, send your sermons ahead of time. I said, I can't. He said, why? I said, I don't know what I'm going to preach. I'm still praying. I didn't custom make this. I didn't come here to get revenge. Nothing. It was by the Spirit of God. Amen. And whatever I am or I'm not, Especially those who know me all my life. This is not what I do. It's who I am. When that woman over there, Geraldine King, birthed me, she messed me up. Ask her. She gave me back to God. I wanted to be an architect. My mama messed me up. You heard all the time saying, I, I did. I used to walk, my brother said himself, walk right down there. Y'all know I did. Shaking hand. I didn't even know why. It was just something that pulled me towards ministers and ministries and the elders in the church. It's because I didn't know what was going on in my little heart. When I was a child, I thought as a child. I understood as a child. And all y'all let me know I was a child. <laughs> but now I'm a man. And I put away childish things. And I don't stand before you to hear the day as little David. I'm standing as a man of God. God didn't send me here because I have family here. He sent me here because he called me. He birthed me to do this. And he brought me because you needed to hear it. So I thank God for you, for this opportunity. I thank God for this great church. Y'all don't know how great you have it. There we y'all spoil. I have pastored 15 churches now, and I can't find one that comes close to what I grew up in here in Delray. I got a church now of 400 members, and I don't, and talk about choirs, I don't have a choir. 400 members. Not a choir. When has this church been without a choir? Without a musician. I gotta pay people. I don't have nobody in the church that can play. Except me. This church is blessed. Y'all have real people doing real jobs. You got a businessman as a treasurer. I got a treasure, I had a treasure who don't even know business. <laughs> the church is blessed. Growing up here is almost being in dreamland. 
And that's why the devil fights Delray so hard. He's trying to destroy. He's a thief. He's trying to steal, kill, and to destroy. And the Lord sent me, this is my homeboy speech right here. I'm saying this one before I vanish. Stop the madness. Remember the Tower of Babel. If you work together, this church will be a great church. But if you start messing confusion and having all these misunderstandings and anger in the church, you're going to tear down the very thing that God meant to be to his name's honor and glory. Learn how to support somebody. Anybody can be a demolition man. Not many can be builders. Learn how to affirm somebody. Learn how to tell somebody you love them. Learn how to work with somebody. You ain't got to be in charge to work with somebody. Because the truth be told, it's Jesus who's in charge. Too much talent in this church. We built this church too small. For the talent that's here, for the investment that's here, for all that's here, too small. But without the Spirit of God in every heart, it's not going to work. Know where you're going. Know who you serve. You're not serving on the church board, you're serving God. Amen. It's bigger than you. It's bigger than me. Yeah. This church belongs to the Almighty and the true living God. Yeah. We're just stewards of our talents, of our gifts, of our lives. I love you, brother. I love you. I pray for you every day. My wife and I, every morning before we go to school, we call the name of the church. Amen. 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 Amen.
how children flock to her to serve the house of children of course. Go back. Swept away, one trouble succeeding another, as in a moment, it is God that shields his creatures and hedges them from the power of the destroyer. But the Christian world has shown contempt for the law of Jehovah. The Christian world has. And the Lord will do just what he has declared that he would. He will draw his blessings from the earth and remove his protection care from those who are what? Rebelling against his law and teaching and forcing others to do the same. Satan has what? Look at him. Of all whom God does not especially guard. He will favor and prosper some in order to further his own design. And he will bring trouble on the earth and lead men to believe that it is God who is afflicted to them. Because um, even when I took the battery out, they're coming through the monitor. It was like, it was a, it was coming out of the I mean, I can't even record the DVDs. While appearing to the children of men as a great possession, he can keep all their work. He will bring luck and disaster until all the cities are reduced to ruin and desolation. Next. Even now, he is what? In accidents and calamities by sea and by land, in great conflagrations, in fierce tornadoes, in terrific hailstorms, in tempest, floods, cyclones, tidal waves, and earthquakes, in every place, in a thousand forms, Satan is what? Even now, he sweeps away the ripening harvest, and famine and distress follow. He imparts to the air a deadly what? Amen. And thousands what? Amen. These visitations are to become what? Uh-huh. Destruction will be upon both man. Amen. Next one. The signs in the what? The signs. Have what? Amen. We talked that out here, did we not? Since that time, what? Tempest, tidal waves, pestilence, and famine have what? Seems like it's done that since we've been in this meeting. The most awful destruction by what? Just before I came here tonight, they're talking about the Mississippi going crazy. Are following one another in what? Next one. The terrible disasters that are taking place from week to week. From week to week. Speak to us in what? A warning. Declaring that the what? That something what? And decisive will soon of necessity. Next one. Probationary time will not continue what? Now God is what? Withdrawing his restraining hand from the earth. Long has been speaking to men and women through the what? But they have not heeded. Have mercy. Now he is speaking to his people. That's the church. And to the world. By his judgments. The time of these judgments is a time of mercy for those who have not yet had the opportunity to what? That's y'all young people. That's why God sent me in the youth revival. Yes. See, your parents knew this stuff. They grew up on this stuff. Somebody needs to teach it to you because it's the same truth. <coughs> Tenderly will the Lord look upon what? There's mercy for you. Okay. His heart is of mercy is what? His hand will what?
shall not die for all that Jesus has served to come. And so all that we have heard, all that we've seen, go with this body. We ask that you would staple it, that you would stamp it in our minds and our hearts, and so that we will not sin against you. We are praying, we are praying, Jesus, that, Father, that you would just make our lives anew. The men and women that you have called, that you have placed here to hear these words, and that their minds will be made up and with a made up mind they will follow you. And we are praying, Jesus, that you will continue to bless Pastor Keith. We thank you so much for the words and the gifts that you have given him to share with us. We thank you that you brought him here, and we pray and ask that you will continue to be with him, and that you will continue to bless his ministry. And wherever he may find himself, he will continue to preach the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ. And so that men and women may be drawn to thee. We ask that you would bless his family, and that you would continue to be with him. And above all things, save him and his family. And we are praying as well that everyone here under the sound of my voice, and all of their loved ones, all of their family members, and all of those that they have, tell, have told about you, will also be found not wanting standing ready to meet you when you shall come. So bless us, we are praying now, that you would save us without the loss of blood, is our prayer. And all of God's children said to you. Before we sit down, Father, I want to bless the my department. Anoint them. They have a job ahead of them. This was only a catalyst that started something mighty in these young people. Give Sonia wisdom along with her counsel how to deal with the youth of this church. Make them cooperative. I pray that you will give them a spirit of working for you. I pray that they will be able to get their lives in order. Bless the homes from which they come out of. May it not be confusion in their homes or abuse in their homes. May it be a lovely place that they may gather themselves to worship and to live for the Almighty God. Be with their church home. May it be conducive to the environment that will nurture these young people, that will affirm them and confirm them to the kingdom of God. I pray for all of the youth activities here, the pathfinders, the kingdom choir, the things that you have put in place to have Delray have a great youth program, Lord, children's church, and all the things I've heard about. Lord, you're just doing a great work here, but we need your spirit. So we anoint the AY, we anoint her assistants, we anoint the officers of the AY, bless the elder in charge of the AY, bless those who have uh, supported the AY, both young and old, and may it become a, a, a tower, a living, breathing lighthouse for you in this city. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, I pray and I am Amen. Amen. God bless you.